So, Brian, congratulations on your appointment as Executive Director for the Spelman Museum. Um, thank you for, for joining us here. And uh, I just wanted to, to ask you a couple questions about your past. Uh, well, I am uh, pleased to be a part of the Spelman Museum, and uh, it was a real honor to be offered the, the director's position. So I'm looking forward to uh, uh, getting to know everybody here and to work on behalf of the museum's mission. So this is, this is a, it's a great honor, and uh, it's good to be back in Massachusetts. So this, this isn't the first museum that you've been executive director at? Uh, no, uh, I uh, most recently was the uh, executive director at the North Andover Historical Society, north of Boston. Okay. I was there for three years, and for uh, about a dozen and a half years before that, I ran the Oneida County History Center in upstate New York. So uh, that's really been the, the second half of my career has been in uh, small museum administration. Uh, prior to that, uh, I worked many years as an aviation museum curator after graduate school. But uh, yeah, it's, it's been a real pleasure and, and I'm just really excited to, to move things forward. What brought you to museum work? I grew up in a family of engineers and I can't really put my finger on why. It's just something innate. I have just always, always had an interest in history and facts and figures uh, that I, I can't ever remember a time where I wasn't interested in, uh, in particularly in American history. So uh, I went to college, got my undergraduate degree as a history major from the, the State University of New York. And uh, at that time, uh, about 30 years ago, there were a couple different tracks I could go. You know, either go into teaching, which most of my uh, fellow uh, history major colleagues were doing, uh, law school, or do something else if I wanted to use my, my history degree. Uh, I wanted to do that, so uh, I wasn't going to law school. I didn't want to teach. So I was like, well, I guess museums are a, a, a natural place to go. Uh, I looked around the country. This is, a, again, pre-internet. Right. Uh, found a few graduate level museum studies programs in the country. Ended up going to Texas Tech and got my master's degree in museum science. And from there, my career was launched. That's, that's terrific. I mean, the, the, the trajectory that brought you eventually here uh, sounds like something of, of long study and something of, of passion as well. Yeah, and uh, if, if, you spend, I, if, if you spend a lot of time in the small to mid-sized museum field, if you make it a career, uh, nine out of 10 uh, long-term long uh, workers in this field are going to end up in administration. Mm -hmm. And I was a museum curator for about eight years out of grad school. Uh, I left for five years to go work with my family's lumber company. Got a lot of retail experience there and, and administrative experience that certainly helped in the second half of my nonprofit career as an executive director. So what has been the uh, process like getting to know the volunteers here? You know, you've got some terrific volunteers, Jan Nancy, John, Jessica, uh, Heidi, yeah. you, you know, Mike Lawson. So these people have, you know, I've known them for quite some time, dedicated, just have a, an absolute passion to the museum. So what has the process been like onboarding and with them helping you kind of familiarize yourself? I've learned over the years that what's most important for organizations like this, uh, you know, largely volunteer driven, um, is that you have to meet people where they are. Mm. Uh, it's not like a corporation where uh, new leadership can come in and start imposing um, a, a direction which might not necessarily be in, in keeping with the, uh, the people that had brought it up to that, up to that point. So uh, I've spent the first month here talking with volunteers one-on-one -on -one trying to get to know, you know, what's their background, how long have they been here, what are their particular interests, what did they do? Most of them are retired. Right. Uh, what did they do for their careers? Uh, just to get to know people and uh, to understand where their strengths are, where their interests are, and uh, over the long haul, my interest is in, in leveraging their passion to, uh, to continue moving the museum forward. Fantastic. And, and on that note, I, was, uh, I wanted to ask what your long-term goals for the museum were, what you're kind of working on now, and whether it relates to the big picture or if you have a big plan that doesn't 
relate to kind of the smaller projects that you're working on now? The smaller projects all feed into a, a much larger vision of, of where the museum can be. And uh, really, I, I have two, two tracks that I'm, I'm pursuing. Uh, first, uh, full disclosure, I am, I am not a philatelist. Uh, right. no, I'm, a, I'm a, a museum professional. And uh, in saying that, uh, you know, museum professional, if you're into museum administration, uh, really a lot of it is small business management. So uh, my internal goal is to ensure that this organization operates efficiently and has, uh, has adequate revenue streams and is, is appropriately staffed to, uh, to continue to, to meet its public service mission. Over the long haul, uh, you've probably heard the, the term, the best kept secret. Yeah. Uh, I've heard that in, I think, every, every museum and historical society that I've ever worked. You know, this is the best kept secret. I don't want the, the Spelman Museum to be described as a best kept secret. Mm. This organization has a national and international reputation and we need to continue to, uh, to do things in terms of participating in the world of philately developing exhibits, putting on uh, programs both virtual and on site uh, to continue to demonstrate our relevance to uh, the, the philatelic community. We also need to make inroads into populations, particularly within the region, people who are not necessarily interested in stamps or, or stamp collecting. But we need to find ways to demonstrate our relevance to, to those groups as well. Uh, we exist within the, the Metro West region of Boston. We have a huge population uh, that we can get our message out to. And uh, continuing to do things that relate the museum's philatelic mission, the areas where non philatelists can relate, is, uh, is a big goal. So. Behind the scenes, make sure we're operating well. Right. And uh, in, uh, in the public sphere, make sure that people, whether they're stamp collectors or not, have a reason to come here and have a reason to support the museum. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Brian. I'm thrilled that you're here. I'm very excited to be working with you. And uh, I'm eager to see what you have in store for the museum in the uh, not too distant future. Well, feelings mutual, Michael. Thank you very much. Thank I you. appreciate your time. Thank you.